Okay, this is a video for the iBaso DX300. It's a brand spanking new DAP. I will put a timestamp right around here so you can skip right to me sitting on the floor close up and looking at it and doing like a little walkthrough and highlighting some points about it. Yes, you can turn off that indicator about what the bitrate is. I would never do that though because it's absolutely gorgeous. Mm, check. Left. Right. We're binaural. That's a big deal for people that have been watching me for a long time because I used to do my videos with a Note 4 with a Note 4's microphone and people would say, dude, I love you, God bless you, love you, please get a freaking camera. And I'm using a GoPro right now and people, it's not a bad thing. And I also it's binaural. But I use this and then I would also have daps and music players. Like I said, go ahead and hit the timestamp and you can skip this if you want. This is a ramble, but this is important because it's why I'm totally in love with this thing. This is not hype. People who know me know this is what I've been looking for. So after I would, you know, do my videos and upload them, people would say, dude, what's with the fucking quality? I would be, you know, playing with the DAP that I just done a video about. And then I would go back to this and I would use um, Neutron or something else. And I'd start swiping through my library and, and I was missing that. I was missing the screen area. I was missing the speed, the instantaneous slide, boom, no gimmicks, no stutters, no lags, nothing with this. And everything that I used as a DAP in comparison wasn't the same. People say, well, it's not. Uh, I wanted what I want. Look at that keyboard. Why does that need to have colors? It, it, it doesn't. How about a mouse? Why? Keep um, everything. The computer, the, the board that's for a restaurant. Why is that? Why is that here? Why is there lights behind the monitor? Why is there lights under the headphone? Why is there lights behind that monitor? What's with the lights everywhere? I don't know. I'm, the, I'm visual. So I loved using this with like a DAC, an external DAC, as soon as they came out, I was always having to do micro USB, try to find a good micro USB to a C or a B or whatever. It was fucking, it was a fucking disaster. It was a nightmare. But I wanted to make it work. And every DAP that I got, I was hoping it would be some kind of replacement. And that never happened. And I just did a video talking about how phones were trying to be DAPs and DAPs trying to be phones and phones won the war. I don't take back what I said, but I will say, that this Note 4, which was big at its time, is not as big as this. The usable layer is not the same size. The vibrancy, the color is not the same. You'll see that if you go ahead and skip. This is the phone that I use now, which is a Sony X1, Xperia 1 II. Sit down. It's not as big as this. This is an absolute beast. It's got six gigs of RAM. I don't remember what my Note 4 had. I think it had four. This has got six. When you open the box, you'll get your paperwork that comes with it. You are done. This is, you made so many people sad with your audio, but I love you because of your screen. You don't really need this, which is such a good sign. This is a data and charging cable, transfer your data. If you still do it the old fashioned way, like I do drag and drop files because everything's flack and um, DSDs. I'm not going to say, I just saw a video about flax today. I'm, I'm not going to say it. Then I'll just skip around. I think this is a burn-in cable right here. And I won't even get into it. If you believe in that, cool. That's your thing. Um, this is like a piece of spare glass for it. It feels very sturdy. FPGA Master Cirrus. This is a quad deck. Let's look at this really quick. Let's not. Let's go ahead and go right to this. Take this off. Put you... Right there, nice and neat. Put you right there. This thing. Now, why am I not using the cover? Because unlike lots of daps, I can't trace my steps like a GPS system with every touch that I put on it. I've been handling this a lot. I can see some... It's actually probably condensation because it's so cold right now in Japan. I turned off the heater so you guys wouldn't have to hear that in the background. I can't trace my route like a GPS tracer because it's not catching my fingerprints every single time I touch it. That's actually just heat. That'll wipe right away. The swipes on the front, I'm not getting that either. Now, you can't see it through the camera, I'm pretty sure. But that, I haven't done anything to this screen. I haven't adjusted any settings or done anything. That is just bonkers. Holy crap. Let me go into album. Oh! What? 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 
There's no stutter. There's no clever software where it fills in the square before it has enough time to actually put in the info, which is the album art, into it. It is legit, fast. I've not updated firmware. I don't even have this connected to Wi-Fi yet. It's just, it powers the Audia fine through 3.5. Let me go to the bottom of this really quick because that's what you guys want to know. No, I know what you guys want to know. Let me tell you that real quick. What does this sound like? It doesn't sound like anything. It sounds like whatever you put in your ears or on your ears, if it's warm or it leans in that direction, it's going to continue to lean in that direction. But DAPs do have one thing, and it's like DAC amps. They've got a, a tonality, and it, its best way to describe it is like the note weight and something that leans a little bit more towards, let's say, a Sony WM1Z. Are you with me? A Sony WM1Z. That's That's got a musical, but it's got weight to the note. The Sony WM1Z. And I'll give you the opposite, so you got my reference. On this side, we've got the WM1Z. And then you've got the WM1A, which is not quite the same musical kind of warmth. This is superior, but this is very popular because it's got kind of the same thing. Then over here, you've got something like uh, KN62. Yeah. Let me redo that for accuracy. Sony WM1Z, K and N62, and then I'll put the WM1A right here. And then on the far other side, I'll put the Ibaso DX200 with the stock amp. Do you have experience with that? That is one of the most clinical, precision, accurate listens that I've ever had. So much so that I found it boring, but it was absolutely nothing just whatever you plugged in you got it back and that's people say well that's what I want I found it to be a little bit I don't know I'm a WM1Z fan right here I like the KN N62 the Calyx M has been in every single video I've done since I built this desk because it's the it's built in 2011 and the way that it plays music is just bonkers I fucking love the Calyx M audio 2011 it's it's got so many things wrong with it playing music like a champ is not one of the problems but we're not here for that I would say that this Calyx D or this DX 300 by Ibaso is somewhere between the WM1A and the WM1Z it is not on the other side of the scale between the WM1A and the DX 200 stock so if we're gonna say that the WM1A is around the middle I would say that this would be slightly on the other side it's got a slight more weight to the note than the WM1A, not quite as much as the WM1Z. If you're familiar with DAPs and if you used them a lot, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, you think I'm talking out of my ass. It's the only thing that DAPs do is they've got a slight difference in their warmth or otherwise. They don't have scooped mids. They don't have rolled off treble. Those are your transducers. Those are your drivers. Those are your BAs, your dynamic drivers. They're, that's what that's what does the roll off. That's what does the sense of mids or vocals being back. Daps do not do that, but they do add a weight to the music. A seeming perceived heaviness to the note that the WM1Z will put on you and the DX200 stock amp, stock amp, very specific, that will not do that. That will not put weight on the note. It's not supposed to. That's not what Ibasa built it to do. It does exactly what they want. And they built a massive fan base around that set or that, that DAP. And I, I wasn't a fan, but I appreciate it now for what it is, which is to say that on the right side, for being a very good thing at what it does and being on this side of the tonality scale, that's perfect. That's a great bookend. And on the other, another great, highly resolving excellent device is the Sony WM1Z. They are on opposite sides of an excellent scale. Where does this place? M on the left side. On the other side of the WM1A. And if you think you spent way too much time on that, when people talk about DAPs, they, they're they going to talk about, like, you can check the... You get on a website and then read. People sometimes say, why don't you talk about specs? Why don't you type DX300 in the, your browser and then check yourself? and then go drink a beer, and then sit down and check it again. Or wipe your eyes, or go take a dump, or do whatever you want to do, and read the specs at your leisure. They're there. They're everywhere that sells this item. Me spending my time to tell you exactly what the voltage is out of 4.4 is a fucking waste of time. I'm going to tell you 
what the tonality of it is and show you what it looks like when you move through its operating system, which if you're still here, you can go ahead now and find where I made that little timestamp and then get out of here. This is dope. This is big. It's got a fucking gorgeous screen. I can navigate through it like a fucking champ. It's absolutely eat a peach. Mountain jam. Look at that thing. That That is as detailed or better than my Note 4. And it's bigger. And the usable area of the screen is bigger than the usable area of the screen on my Sony phone. This is this phone's only about nine months old. That's a fucking dap. It's got quad DAC. This is dope, and it powers my Audio. It powers the GL two thousand. It powers my. It powers IEMs. No problem. This is legit excellent. This is awesome. I like it a lot. I'll do another review for it in comparison with maybe the DX two twenty Max. Though I'm not a fan of that because it just doesn't. I have that. I won't get into that. This this is a viable option for someone that says, I like colors like you do. I want to see my album art done in a way that does justice to the collection that I've spent years of my life gathering, and I want to look at it on something that looks like it's... Let me stop it right there. No, I don't want, let me stop it right there. Oh, let me play that. No, let's not. Let's drop that down. Let's get that out of here. Let's go back. Let's get out. Here we go. Boom, up, bing, boom, shut it down. Oh, I'm sorry, I want to go back in. How long does that take? That fast. It's like a phone, except it's got a quad DAC. And it's got an amp system that is, I believe, FPGA Master, Qualcomm 660, 6 gigs. It's got a digital power system significant patented separate amp and digital power supplies. That's becoming a thing, kind of, I guess they patented, they put the patent number right there for in China. Fucking wow. That is dope. And, it, come on, hold on a second. You, you gotta be paying attention to what is around you in the video right now. You've got to take a look at this and the colorfulness and then look around you and see. Now that that would probably be appealing to that guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it sounds really good because it's kind of leaning towards a WM1Z. Not quite there, which makes some people maybe happy. But it's 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 reminding me of it. It's playing back music in a way like that. It's treating my EX1000 in the way that the WM1Z does. But this is a far superior OS. I got to take that back because it doesn't age on the WM1Z. It's still just as good as it's always been. Oh, stop. Oh, stop. Oh, stop. Oh, Grateful Dead. I want to see that. Trucking. Let me put that on screen. Uh, yeah. Yeah, give me some of that. So if you're still here, sorry. Um, you should have skipped already to the other thing. Sorry about the light on that. I got mm, video equipment coming, so I'll be upgrading for when I do close-ups on the table and stuff like that. I actually got a rig. Look at that. Let's look at that for a second. Ugh. Holy fuck. I got a rig that you put a camera on and you can remote control and it goes really, really slow. You know that stuff you see on Josh's channel? You know, when you see the IM and the headphones and you're like going left to right and you're just slowly panning around the fucking thing. I bought one. Look at your boy. You know what else I bought? A Focal Clear. I bought it just now. It should be here tomorrow. Japan is very fast with shipping. So, oh, oh. Ah, fuck it. Oh, you can go ahead and check in the other thing. Um, this is a flak right here. And the that's showing like a pink actually if I change this and I go to let me go artist and I'm gonna go to uh, DSD of all eyes on me and then click it and now you should be seeing a blue it's very very subtle and if you're not gonna skip if you go to advanced and you go to display settings you've got a little thing that says mmm Lock screen artwork, rounded artwork, default, ambient mode, 
custom lock screen network. There's another thing in there. Oh, right here. Indicator. Turn on sample rate and charge indicator. So if you don't like that little teeny tiny little color bar, then turn it off because you can just do it. I'm not turning it off. When would I, me turning off a color? Hell no. I'm not doing that. And it's still playing. Look at that little blue. I gotta plug something into it and listen to it. I'm out. Okay, this will be the sit down close up part of the DX300. Sorry about the light. I've got a warm light like right up above me. This is the package that it comes in. If it looks long in the video, it's because it, it is very long. It's a big device. Comes with cables with something also that looks like a 2.5 TRS to a USB. I'm pretty sure I'll look into what that's for. You see how much I've checked before I did the video. This is a power and data transfer cable. This is a nice case. Might use it, but I don't seem to need it yet, but it's nice that it's included. We've got uh, at least one cover. Or maybe two. I guess it's probably one. I think there's one on it. Then you got your paperwork. This is the device right here. I am very happy that the back is not glass or some kind of fingerprint catching. It's just a nice, beautiful. I thought it was warped or something like the battery was. It's just the way it is. It's like silk. It's gorgeous. It's got the buttons on the side. I haven't taken this, take the plastic off. It, I think they're perfect. Somebody said they're kind of shallow. Uh, I think they're perfect. It's got a, looks like a kind of brass. There's no play to it. If you try to rock it, I don't know what it's made out of. It looks really nice and it's very easy to move. It's got the perfect amount of play. On the bottom, it's got a replaceable amp. You can take this out. The one that comes stock with it is uh, stock amp 11 module 2.5, 4.4, and then 3.5. You can take that out. It's got 6 gigabytes of RAM inside. This thing is... I know. Let's see it, bro. Put that over there. Hold the button down. And start the show. Does that look very tall right there? It is. I know we can't compare the Can N3 Pro, but... Let's do it anyway. That's further away, so it's, it's huge. The screen is peerless. I've not seen anything that looks this freaking gorgeous. I even like that wallpaper. I took the other stuff off of it, moved it to the side screen right here, so you can see what it actually comes with. It's got settings, calculator, gallery, cool APK, Chrome, AK Pure, and files, but I like to put them over to the other panel because I want to keep this as clean as I possibly can. Um, indicators on the top, it looks like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, volume, um, what's in, G. Let me go ahead and slide this down. Got your, this is Android 9.0. Oh, that's going to be in the light. You'll see it as soon as I let me clear that out. Okay. On the bottom, you've got Mango. You should know this if you've played with this before. On the top, you've got your library. You can go all music, album. This thing has six gigs of RAM. There is no difference between this and my phone, my Sony phone. Nothing. There's no, you guys know me from a long time ago. You can check my channel. I've done reviews for very, very nice dApps for years. They have sometime a coding thing where while it's loading in the art, it will do something clever. This doesn't need to. As fast as you move this, does that matter? Yeah. This thing looks like a phone. It wants to play with the phones, then be like a phone. And so far, it really is. Artist, genre. This is other things, alarms, Android, DCIM, download movies, music. Here's the one thing that I would say. I guess I get that you're using this much space on the top to make ease of use so that 
like arm's length, you could touch these. You don't need to hold it up close to your face. And there's no like little finger touching stuff when it comes to this. So I guess, but when I first saw this, I was like, man, give me the whole, give me the whole screen for the album art. But as it is, it's already as big as my phone. So I can't really complain about it. Something to note. I'm going to go into artist here. Tupac, if you see this part up here, let me go with Tupac. And I believe this is a DSD. And then you notice this blue LED light turned on up here. So for a DSD, it's going to be blue, apparently. I have the same album, and I've got it in flack. If I go right here, I play this one. It's the same thing. And then it's going to turn to a green. don't know if you can quite see that. Somebody said, um, what if I don't want to use that awesome, super, excellent, very, very cool. Also, just tap it up and get your typical Android back button. What if you don't want to use that LED light? Well, then go here, touch advanced, and then it'll give you the option right here, indicator. Turn off the sample rate and change charge indicator. I guess it, I don't know color, what does one charge. Unplug pause, pause when unplugging. That's kind of clever, so I'll leave that on. Indicator, I'll leave that on because I like it. USB DAC, mm, cancel. Allows the player to work as a USB DAC. Bluetooth DAC, allows the player to work as a Bluetooth DAC. Display settings. You can use the background in ambient mode, um, which uses the album artwork. Let me see if I can... So that'll be the background. That's a little bit different. Unslide or normal mode. Use the background pictures, the background. I'm not playing. Okay. Let me go back. This should be playing. Maybe it's because I don't have headphones plugged in. It'll change the background to be taking this album art and it's kind of stretching. You can see Tupac looks like that's his elbows and his arms right there. Or you can change it to, I think, what is the typical background. So you've got that. Let me go back into advanced. Display settings. You can also set it so that the artwork is in like a circle. Rounded artwork. Mm kind of cool in a way if it spun around it would be cool i guess that would be better but i think i will actually keep this in rectangle i'm old school i want it to be a square very cool though lock screen artwork year tag alphabetic scrolling if my voice sounds all around it's because i'm not using my balanced or my my balanced my binaural audio that's on the gopro this is a different camera so the color is different. Sorry, I want to focus on the screen. As long as that looks okay, I'm good to go. So display settings are very cool. Ambient, normal, default, default one, two. You can do a custom. I haven't gotten into that yet. Get out of there. Sleep timer, display settings. System info. Model, version, internal SD card have not updated the firmware yet because I want to see what it's like, the user experience out of the box. Mm, have had no issues yet. How does it sound? I guess I'll just throw this in here because I'll do it at other parts again. This is something that is in between the WM1A and WM1Z. It's not quite the W... Let's say the iBaso DX200 with the stock amp is the epitome of clear, stone-cold, neutral, without any sense of anything except just straight-out audiophile play. We'll, we'll agree on that. And then we'll say the WM1Z is something that's got a kind of warm, organic tonality to it. Okay? Can we agree on that? And then we would move more towards the other direction, towards the DX200 with the WM1A, which is neutral, but it's not quite as um, analytical, sterile, um, crystal clear as the DX200 with the stock amp. So if we say the DX200 is all the way with the stock amp to this side, tonality-wise. And then we say the WM1A sits in the middle, and the WM1Z is on the other side, slightly warm, in a good way, but slightly warm. 
I would say that this would be between the WM1A and WM1Z. It's got a little bit of just a hint of warmth to it, just a teeny bit. Remember, your whatever earphones or headphones that you use with this is going to be what determines the tonality. It's the transducers in your ear or on your head that are really going to determine. I could take a warm set of headphones and I might get slight tonality adjustments depending on my DAP, but really it's going to be the drivers and their, the way that they're tuned that are going to be. I can't take a DAC a DAP that is mm, sterile like the DX200 and put a bassy set of headphones like the Sony Z, Z7s and then it's going to be change the leaning of the headphones. It doesn't work that way. But if you listen to stuff that's balanced or neutral to your ears because you've used it so much, like the Sony EX1000s to me, I know them so well, I've used them so long, I can get determined by plugging in the EX1000 and listening, even though it's got three peaks that I know where they are. I can hear when something is analytical. I can hear when something's adding a little bit of, seems like energy in the low end. It's not really, it's like note weight, I guess would be the way to describe it. This is something that is closer to the WM1Z than WM1A. Hence me loving it because it's got crystal clarity, but it's not, it doesn't seem lifeless to me. And the DX200, which is the same company with the stock amp, was really not my cup of tea. So this is a little bit more towards what I like. And it's on a huge screen and it, it sounds fantastic. I've listened to the Audia because I've had that. I got the Gold Planar GL2000s. Those are new for me. I've not evaluated listening to multiple devices with it. The Audia I've had for a while. They sound very good on this and it actually drives it easily without any problem whatsoever. I've got a converter that I can use and I can plug it in. It's got no problem. Drives all my IEMs fine. There's no problem with that. Um, it's got one TF card. What is he doing? Okay. Again, you can take a look at these buttons. They're fairly... They're not flush, but they're fairly close. And this is the volume knob. It's it's stunning, the size of it. This is a phone, man. This is bigger than my Sony X12. This is a it's not very heavy though. It's not unwieldy. I should put the DX220 Max next to this. I will maybe in a future video. That is a big thing that really is not. That's very semi, semi, very semi portable. This is, if you are okay carrying a second device, you don't need an amp stack on this thing because it's got plenty of power. Let me see if I can see. So it's got 120 gigabytes of internal storage, 6.5 HD capacitive touchscreen. It's fucking dope. Two colors, black and blue. A PGA Master Technology, high-grade power management. I guess it's got separate power for balanced and single. Is that how they're doing that? It's got replaceable amp modules, open Android OS. Very nice. So screen is best in the business. The speed is maybe the same. I don't know anything that quite works as fast as this. The aesthetic, I think this is just the epic apex of design. You see how much I've been holding it, and there's nothing on the back. There's not 50 things, DNA captures on the back of this thing. That's why I'm not putting the cover on it, because I want to show that this thing, with all this handling, it's not doing anything. It's fucking beautiful. Very, very nice work. And I'll say it several times during the different parts of this video. I said, you know, dApps and phones and dApps are trying to be phones and phones are trying to be dApps. And it looks like phones want it because you can just do so much with it. Because phones have fewer and fewer options with the 3.5 out and you've got to use USB or do other stuff. There, I guess there's always going to be a place for a good dApp. It's got to have enough power to do headphones and earphones. And so far, this will do the audio. The GL is easier to drive than the audio. Um, so this will do the audio. That's that's very cool. And that means that it'll do all my earphones. And navigation is... 
like as fast as I want it to be. Ibeso, good job. This thing's gorgeous. I will do more listening impressions. I'll stick with what I got. That doesn't ever change. It doesn't really matter. I know that when something is being influenced by my earphones. So this is, in fact, something that leans between the WM1A and the WM1Z, which is a very sweet spot to be. And it's why I'm doing a video, really. This is just so impressive. Gorgeous. Absolutely stunning. Do I reckon you get this? If you're a believer in having a separated device because you like to have a 4.4 and the 3.5 and the 2.5 balanced and to keep your library of high quality and have lots of storage and not slow down your phone, this would be something that you should probably consider. It's not going to annoy you with its milliseconds of delay compared to your phone. It is exactly the same. The experience with this is jarring in that it's just like using a phone it's the first app that i've ever used that is really indistinguishable except for its weight and it's not that heavy do i wreck this hell yeah this is nice i've been doing this for years and i keep talking about being a screen slut and if you're going to have a big screen use the whole screen you see how much bevel on the side here this trim that they've got they're using just about the whole thing and that's a lot of space that they're using. I don't have anything right in front of me except for the Kn, And that's using, this is an example, because it's got the the tubes. But they're using like a third of the area. But that's kind of this design. Beautiful. I'll go ahead and put this after a stand-up intro of the set. And I'll do a follow-up to it. Not really sure. The tone, the opinion of it, where it sits, won't change. It's not as warm as a Calyx M. That's the most warm that you can get. It's not as warm as a WM1Z, which is warm but high fidelity. It's got great micro detail. The WM1A is a little, little cooler, but not stone cold neutral. This would be between those two, not between the WM1A and the DX200, which I'm not hit, kicking. It's what pe some people like. You want a little more. I don't need, it's just, it's weight to the note is the best way to describe it. This is between the 1A and the 1Z, which is just a naturally sweet spot for me. Hence the video, 17 minutes. If you're still here, thank you very much. And I'm out. Uh, I wreck it.